Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mary. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Today's video is going to be sort of a recommendations video. It's kind of spin on the if you like this book, try this book as well, because it's if you did not like this book, I think you might like this book instead. Basically, what I'm going to do is find books that I personally did not like um, that I read because I wanted to fill a certain purpose, whether that is a trope that I like or whether that is like an atmospheric thing. Um, and then I'm going to give you better recommendations that I find fill those things that I was looking for in those books a little bit better. So without further ado, let's just jump into the first comparison. I actually have two recommendations based on one book that I did not like, um, and that is Wanderers by Chuck Wendig, which I read last summer because it has one of my all-time favorite tropes, which I like to call the long walk in dystopians. Basically, for me, the long walk trope is the world ends for whatever reason, and there are a few people left who have survived this thing, and they're all moving towards something, and either it's because they heard a rumor that something was going to happen there, but I absolutely love this trope. I think it's really fun. I did not like it in Wanderers. Um, Wanderers I just felt like it was a little too long. It's a horror book uh, basically about the long walk trope but essentially what happens is a bunch of people in this town and apparently all over the world sort of become zombies and their loved ones and friends and family don't know what's going on with them but they are not no longer like reacting to things or acting normal. They're just walking in a straight line towards an unknown destination and so it's about primarily the sister of one of the girls who has this thing happen to her and so the sister is following the girl just to make sure she's okay and so she's walking with her um, and just observing what is going on. I didn't love that book for a lot of reasons. I talked about it in a vlog so I will try to link that if I can find it but uh, I do love this trope so I think if you read that book and you were fascinated by that premise but didn't really like the way the book handled it, uh, The Stand by Stephen King is one that I would highly recommend which is about a virus taking out like 99 point something percent of the world and all these people have the same dream. So they start walking towards where the dream tells them to go. If I'm remembering correctly, it's Nebraska, but I could be wrong about that. Um, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. And it's basically like about good versus evil uh, at the end of the world, kind of. It's got an interesting ending that I didn't personally love, but I did love the experience of reading the whole book. Uh, it's very long, so I will warn you about that. The other book I would recommend for this is The Book of M by Pink Shepherd. This one is again, sort of a weird disease starts taking over, except for for this one, people start losing their shadows. And within a few days or weeks of losing your shadow, it depends on the person, you lose all of your memories. And this man at the beginning of the book, his wife loses her shadow and she leaves and doesn't come back. So he goes looking for her. And then along the way, here's these rumors that everyone is going to New Orleans. And so he begins to go that way. Um, I love both of those books. Uh, I think the book of M is my favorite of the three, but I do know that it has the most mixed reviews. So um, there you go. The next book I have a recommendation for is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagahiri, I think is how her name is pronounced, which if you don't know, this is a booktube darling that I read a few years ago and had like very visceral reactions to. I did not rate this book because I feel like the rating was really beautiful. The book was pretty well done, but I hated everything that it did. Um, and what I went into this book wanting was a story that follows a friend group for a long period of their life, which is sort of what you get in that book. But overall, it's not like fully what you get in that book, if that makes sense. And so the book that I have to recommend instead is South of Broad by Pat Conroy, which again is a found family type story that follows a group of friends originally when they are like teenagers, I think, and when they all meet to adulthood and through adulthood. I will say this one has more of a time jump rather than following them directly all the way through, which is more of what A Little Life does. A Little Life starts in the 20s, or in their 20s, and goes back to when they were a teenager with like flashbacks, um, or when they were, I guess they were in college when they met, um, and then it goes all the way forward through their 50s. Like they end up being, not like old, but like it follows them for a long period of time. Whereas Pat Conroy, South Abroad, follows them when they are in high school, and then now something has happened that is bringing them back to things that happened when they were in high school. And personally, I thought it was better. <laughs> it does have some traumatic things happening to some characters, which is a huge part of A Little Life. A Little Life's main character pretty much is Jude, who has horrible things happen to him his whole life. And you find out about them in great detail and very graphically throughout the book, which is one of the reasons I hated it. This book has similar trauma being inflicted upon characters, but it's not on page. 
And so for that reason, I think it's better handled. <laughs> Okay, and the last recommendation I have for you today, this is kind of a shorter video, so I apologize for that, but the last recommendation I have is if you want a like twisted fairy tale uh, with the roots in the real world, and you were really excited to read Gingerbread by Helen Oyeyemi, I don't know how her name is pronounced, so I apologize for that, um, but you were disappointed by it, I have two recommendations that I think you will like. So um, the first is what Should Be Wild by Julia Fine, which I know has really mixed reviews, okay? A lot of people didn't like this book. I personally love this book, so I think it's worth the read. It's only like 300 and something pages. Um, it's beautifully written. It's about a girl who has this disease where if, it's not really a disease, but she has this infliction where if she touches a living thing, it dies, and if she touches a dead thing, it comes back to life. And so it's a little bit like Pushing Daisies, but she killed her mother um, when her mother gave birth to her because Obviously she touched her mom and her mom died uh, and they didn't realize that she could bring things back to life till later. So it's really interesting reading about how she like can't eat certain things and has to be really careful with everything. It just is a really interesting story, but basically she's been raised by her father and this maid who lives in town. And one day the maid doesn't show up for work and her dad hasn't come home. Um, he went out looking for something and never came back. And so she goes to the maid's house to try to figure out it's like a nanny, I guess, more than a maid, but she goes to the like housekeeper, maid, nanny's house, um, caretaker, I guess is the better word. She goes to the caretaker's house, uh, finds out that the caretaker is passed and she meets, uh, I don't remember what the guy's relationship with the caretaker was, if it was like her son or her nephew or something, but she meets this guy and he agrees to take her around because she's never really been out of the house because of her infliction. And so the story goes from there because she's looking for her dad. Half of the story is told through the perspective of other women um, who lived in the same house as her and who are her like direct ancestors. She is a direct descendant of these women and um, they're the cursed women. So she is from a long line of cursed women. That's part of the premise. And what I really liked about this book is that it has a strong storytelling aspect. So, and that's something that this also has in common with Gingerbread and, um, the other book I'm going to talk about in a second, but throughout the story, you as the reader are getting told these stories that Maisie, the main character, is being told about her ancestors. And then you also get to read from the perspective of said ancestor what actually happened. And I thought that was a really interesting part of this story. That was one of my favorite things about it. But the other book that I would recommend if you like that kind of thing and you were disappointed by Gingerbread, which I haven't really talked about what it's about, it's sort of an immigration story uh, based in like a fake country where there's like magic and this family is from there and they come to the United Kingdom I believe and the country that they're from doesn't actually exist but it does exist but we don't know it exists. Um, it's a little bit confusing. I thought it sounded really fun but I wound up really disliking that book. Um, I couldn't follow it and I just thought it was kind of boring but again the mother tells the daughter a lot of stories and the daughter tells the mother a lot of stories and that's like a lot of how the book is doled out. So if you like that idea I also think you would like The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert which is a YA story but I do think that it's a little bit older YA. Um, it's more of like a dark fairy tale again and this one follows a girl who's I think her name I don't remember her name was her name Alice I'm not really sure. She lives with her mother and her grandmother is this famous author who wrote this book of fairy tales called The Hazelwood, about The Hazelwood. And um, it's like a cult classic, so it's not in print anymore. Nobody really knows that much about her grandmother. She's had a very mysterious life. But at the beginning of the book, her grandmother passes. She gets a letter basically asking her to go to The Hazelwood. Her mother says, no, you can't go. And she doesn't know why, so she goes. Um, and then you find out that they're, all the fairy tales are real, basically. Uh, so it's one of those. So again, it's very... Um, rooted in storytelling and obviously fairy tales. What I liked about this book a lot especially is that I feel like it draws a lot of inspiration from original fairy tales by like the Brothers Grimm and other things like that because if you've read like I think Hans Christian Andersen is the one who wrote um Little Mermaid but like they're creepy stories like I think the Little Mermaid she had to cut her tail open in the middle to give herself legs um and like obviously in Cinderella they chopped off the toes and the heel and all this stuff to try to fit into the glass slipper because they didn't have small enough feet. So um, they got their eyes pecked out by birds. Snow White's mother had to, or stepmother had to dance on hot coals for throughout the entire wedding. Like all this horrible stuff. 
really dark, really grim things. And uh, that's very much reflected in the stories told in the Hazelwood. Um, it is a duology, but I don't know that you necessarily need to read both. I felt like the first one kind of ended well on its own. Although now that I'm thinking about it, I don't really remember how it wrapped up or how they connected. So maybe don't take my word for that. But The Hazelwood and uh, What Should Be Wild are two of my favorite fairy tale inspired darker stories that I've read recently. So I think that if you were looking for that kind of thing and you didn't find it, I think both of those are great places to start. So that's gonna be it. There's only three comparisons in this video. I was hoping to find a couple more, but I've realized that I have been keeping this list of books that have ideas or premises or tropes that I like or that I think I like, like things that sound really good, but I end up not liking the book. I've been keeping a list of those and trying to find things that have this a similar sounding trope or premise or whatever that I actually end up really liking. And I've got a couple books that don't have a match yet. So I'll have to do a part two of this video once I've read uh, more friends to lovers romances <laughs> and uh, another like apocalyptic end of the world isolated setting mystery. So, <laughs> Without further ado, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Uh, it really helps my channel out. You can also subscribe to my channel. I do try to post around two videos a week. If you can think of any good friends to lovers romances or an apocalyptic setting, isolated setting mystery, leave them in the comments down below because I would love to do part two of this video at some point and it would, you know, help me out to read something. Uh, that I think that sounds like something I would like that I actually do end up liking. So uh, thank you again, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!